is Amy Dove, the Keto Queen. It's Monday, Monday, Monday. I love Mondays at my house. I love Mondays in Jackson, Tennessee. I love Mondays for all of my friends. Mondays are an awesome opportunity, guys, to, yes, jump on whatever you call the wagon, but even more than that, Mondays is your day to set the mood for the entire week. I know I say this every Monday, but it's so important to me, guys. You get to control your attitude for the week. You get to control what you put effort and time in for the week. You get to control how you're going to help someone else this week. You get to control the way you feel. Not every minute of every day of every week, but you get to control the primary mood set you put for yourself this week. So I absolutely love Mondays. Hey, Brandon. Hey, Jessica. Hey, Shari. So yes, if you didn't do so well over the weekend, yes, Monday is a new start, but I don't like to look at Mondays as a new start for a diet. I like to look at Mondays as a new start for a new attitude, <laughs> a new attitude adjustment for some of us who need it. <laughs> but I just love Mondays. It's been a great one. Very busy. I'm so excited to try something new tonight. We're making some cheesy pepper jack Brussels sprouts. I've never made them this way, so I'm super excited to try it out. Hey, Tanya, how are you? So what are y'all doing for dinner tonight that's a low-carb or keto-friendly? I always ask that because you don't believe it, or you might not think it, but people look at your comments, and if you tell people what you're doing for dinner tonight, it helps them think, oh, wow, it's been a long time since I've had that, or man, that sounds so good. And they might even reach out for you for your recipe. So guys, I love encouragement. Let's encourage each other with what we're having for dinner. And if it's not keto or low carb, it's okay. You're not going to be perfect all the time, but I still want to know what you're planning for dinner tonight. Hey, Gina, how are you? So we're going to start mixing this up really quickly because it's going to go fast and I'm hungry. You'll hear some banging. I don't know if y'all can hear that or not. My husband's back there or actually up there in the uh, attic. He's doing some electrical work that didn't get finished at the house. So we're doing some of our own work at this point. Uh, I've got an awesome friend who gave me a good price on some finishing of the house. So hopefully I'll be reaching out to him tonight. So anyway, we're making some cheesy pepper jack Brussels sprouts. I'm trying to move this so you can see me and hopefully not have so much noise behind me. So we're starting this off really simply with Brussels sprouts. So I don't know if they come in bunches or what you're supposed to call them, but I use two bags <laughs> of fresh Brussels sprouts. You'll see I cut them in half. I'm going to call them bunches. So two bunches of Brussels sprouts. I also took a very small. So, <laughs> hey, Wendy, how are you? So we did two bushels, I guess, if you want to call it that, of Brussels sprouts. Cut them in half. I love the fresh veggies. If you want to use frozen, you can try it. I have no idea. I've never tried this recipe before. So I'm going with fresh because I love my fresh veggies. And I also took a very small yellow onion, just cut it up really fine. You can slice it thin or chop it thin, I don't care. You don't even have to put onions on here if you don't want onions, but I can't wait to try this recipe out. Melody's doing pork steak, mm -hmm. and cheesy garlic rice cauliflower, that sounds amazing. Y'all know I had my pork steaks yesterday, I love pork steaks. So that's all I've done so far, is just cut up my Brussels sprouts, cut up that small onion, and now I'm gonna go ahead and add all of the ingredients. So I've got a fourth cup of melted butter. I'm gonna do it a little different than what the recipe calls for. It tells us to line it out and then, then mix all this up and put it on the parchment paper, but I'm just gonna mix it all together in a bowl. So I've got a fourth cup of melted butter. I gotta read this off, it's my first time, so excited. We're gonna do um, one teaspoon, find me a teaspoon, one teaspoon of parsley. Now you can use dried parsley. You can use the fresh ones that I love. I'm gonna turn around so you can see it. Like the fresh, I love these fresh packs at Walmart or Kroger, anywhere in the produce section. So we're gonna do a teaspoon of parsley. All right, we're gonna do a tablespoon of garlic. Let me put my, my dry stuff in there for first. So I'm gonna do a half teaspoon of salt. And I'm using Redmond's Real Salt because you guys know I love this salt. So a half a teaspoon. I get it shaken up first. There we go. Half teaspoon is, whoop, that's a little more, but that's okay, because I like a lot of salt on my Brussels sprouts anyway. We're gonna do a fourth teaspoon of pepper. And I'm only gonna do a fourth teaspoon for sure on pepper, because when this is finished, I'm gonna add a little bit of red pepper flakes to my pepper jack cheese that's gonna go on the top. So yes, I don't wanna go get too crazy with the hotness. I love spicy. So four teaspoon of pepper, a half teaspoon of salt. All right, then we're gonna do a tablespoon of oil. I'm using avocado oil. If you like olive oil, go for it. I am adding one tablespoon of avocado oil to mine. Well, it looks good so far, guys. And then we're gonna do a full tablespoon of garlic. 
Now, if you want to use garlic powder, you might have to season that to taste. I'm using minced garlic, so we're just going to squeeze in a whole tablespoon. And guys, y'all know I love my garlic, so my tablespoons always overflow. <laughs> and I might even add some more later. All right, so all we're going to do now is get a fork. I should have done that already. Actually, I'm going to do a spoon, and we're going to stir all this up. But look how pretty it is. I am doing a little different. I'm mixing it all up in the bowl, and then we're going to put it onto our parchment paper. Uh, now, it's not a bad idea to do it like the ingredients or like the recipe says, because these aren't cooked at all, so they're really hard. It may not mix as well as, as it's supposed to, but I didn't see any point in trying to... Uh, uh, I didn't see any point in trying to make this evenly over the Brussels sprout, so I'm, I'm uh, putting it on avocado oil. It's all we use. I love avocado oil, Brandon. It tastes really good. I really, really, really enjoy it. So what is everybody else doing for dinner? Hey, Betsy. I'm curious what y'all are doing for dinner tonight that's low-carb or keto-friendly, and ask me any questions you might have for today. I had a couple of friends reach out to me about the keto reboot that's coming this week. We'll be doing our reboot again on Sunday. So excited for my monthly extended fast. Uh, but their question was uh, geared specifically towards the keto nat drinks, which you guys know I love. Okay, these are these are coated pretty good. So I'm gonna take these and put them out on my parchment paper. Like I said, you don't have to add any onion to this if you don't want to. If you are a little um, shy about onions, you don't have to put any onion or you can do just little bits of onion. But we are gonna make our pans dirty now. I'm gonna take these Brussels sprouts just get my hands dirty. We wanna make sure that it's face down. So face cut side down. We took fresh Brussels sprouts, like I said, and just cut them in half. And I also do wanna use my fingers too because I wanna make sure the onion is evenly spread over this. So the recipe I'm gonna share for you later after I taste this to make sure I like it, says to put your Brussels sprouts on the parchment paper first and then mix your uh, sauce in a bowl and pour it over. But as you can see, this is not like a thin liquid sauce. Uh, so I knew it wouldn't be thin and then it says to actually stir your Brussels sprouts around keeping the cut side down So I thought that's gonna be kind of hard. So I decided just to mix it all in a bowl <laughs> I do have onions kind of everywhere. So I'm gonna uh, Divvy those out And as you cut your Brussels sprouts make sure your biggest ones are in the middle so they'll cook uh, quicker And as you cut them if you have loose leaves just throw the leaves to the side You don't want any loose leaves in here and guys this looks good. So I'm making sure they're all cut size down. I'm gonna wash my hands real fast and come right back. Let me know what you're doing for dinner tonight. And if you have any questions about keto or low carb, you can spread these out a little thinner or a little wider and they'll cook a little faster, but I'm not in a huge hurry. That's a really thick onion. I'm gonna go ahead and keep it on here. <laughs> uh, let me wash my hands, I'll be right back. Those look really good. So my daughter asked me what I was doing for dinner tonight. I told her I was making some cheesy uh, pepper jack Brussels sprouts and she loves cabbage for the first time in her life. She finally is trusting me to try new things, but she still won't try the Brussels sprouts. I did tell her this the first time I'm cooking them this way. So when she's ready, I want her to try them the way I know it was delicious. But guys, I'm gonna come back tonight and let you know if this recipe is worth it. They look really, really pretty. Now what I'm gonna do now, just to make sure they're all coated with some oil so they don't uh, burn, uh, or stick. I'm gonna take a little bit of olive oil spray. I know it's not the best thing in the world, but I am gonna spray over the Brussels sprouts just to make sure they're all coated, okay? And I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the oven. I got my oven on 425 and I'll be right back with you. Yum, this smells so good. It smells super delicious. Now, I'm gonna cook these for about 20 minutes. Now, some of my Brussels sprouts are a little thick, so it may take a little longer than 20 minutes. Perfectly fine to stick a fork in them. When they get to the softness that you like in your Brussels sprouts, we're gonna take it out and we're gonna shred a little bit of pepper jack cheese to put over the top and put them back in on a very low broiler. So you gotta watch, make sure they don't burn. But we're gonna melt that cheese on a broil. And then if you want to, like I'm going to, add a little red pepper flakes to the top, yum. I'm so excited <laughs> to try this for the first time. So let's move over to our uh, pork chops. Haley said, well, what are you cooking? I said, I'm gonna do pork chops. And she said, oh, 
Mom, will you please do those ranch pork chops? And I was like, Haley, I just cooked them last week. <laughs> we cook them all the time. Can I cook something different? And she's like, but we love the ranch chops. And I said, I know, but let's try something different. She said, okay, can we do the creamy Parmesan garlic Brussels, um, pork chops? I'm like, Haley, I just cooked them like four times. <laughs> but my family loves pork chops and they always want the same things. So I try to make sure I do incorporate some things different just because at one point, at some point, Haley's gonna be like, oh, ranch chops again. So I try to um, rotate it around, even though they love those things, I try to make it a little different so they don't get tired because my family eat the exact same as I do. Now, yes, tomorrow I plan to make meatballs and my son, his girlfriend, or his, my son and my daughter probably will have meatball subs with bread. But me and my son's girlfriend will probably have zucchini with meatballs and marinara. So we all eat a little different, but primarily they eat the same thing I cook. I do not cook two meals. So I stopped that here a long time ago. I did in the very beginning, and I thought, this is getting too old. So tonight, for the pork chops, with all that said, <laughs> I know I'm talking too much now. We are making a sauce, or making a crust with my pork chops. So we're going to use my air fryer basket. And I'm just making this really super simple. I took some crushed Parmesan, and I use this often to make my crust in my air fryer. So some crushed Parmesan, and you can use any kind of seasoning. I like to use parsley and garlic. I like to use seasoning salt. I like just salt and pepper. You can make anything you want. You can use ranch that my daughter loves. Uh, but tonight, we're going to keep it super, super easy, and I've got my pork chops, and I'm going to season them with salt and pepper because I always put salt and pepper on my meat. And we are using Redmond's Real Salt. It's a very good pink Himalayan salt, which is really, really important for keto. So I'm just telling you guys what I'm cooking tonight, but let me know if you have any questions about keto or low carb. Uh, someone had a good question today in a group of ours, and that is, what kind of carb counts do you need to look at? Like if I'm brand new, what am I, what am I trying to limit myself to? And there's a big difference between keto and low carb. Keto, dieting will create ketones as long as you know what you're doing <laughs> and you are consistent with the amount of carbs that you intake your body can create ketones or you can use ketones but you can create ketones which is called ketosis which is basically burning a uh, stored fat for energy awesome right who does not want to be a fat burner like i do <laughs> when i wake up in the mornings i don't want to know my butt is actually working to build fuel <laughs> But there is a difference between keto and low carb. So keto is limiting those carb counts really, really low. So those carb counts should be, you know, 20 to 25 each day. To be consistent for your body to create those ketones, you have to be consistent. And those carb counts need to be really low. Now, low carb is really good for your health. I truly 100% support anyone who is low carb as well as keto. The difference in low carb is that your body, in most instances, will not create ketones because you're actually allowing more um, uh, carbs and your body is still burning carbs for fuel. So the biggest difference between ketosis or keto and low carb is the fuel source. For keto, you are creating ketones for your fuel source. For low carb, you're still using carbs and sugar to create that energy like every other American, okay? Uh, the only time you can really be low carb and create ketones is if you have a really good, strong metabolism. You exercise all the time like my husband does. He eats low carb and he stays in ketosis because he is always at the gym. He loves it. It's who he is. Um, and then if your body is fat adapted to where it's always used to creating ketones, so I have been keto for three years. So if I go out this weekend and I just decide that I wanna have a baked potato or half a baked potato, I'd probably never do a whole one. But if I decided I wanted to, my body knows what to do with that. It wants to get rid of it fast. And my body knows how to create ketones. So I will quickly get back into ketosis. So that's the biggest difference. Now the carb counts. For um, keto is 20 to 25 carbs every day consistently. For low carbs, most people will look at, you know, 50 to 150 and they'll say you know that's low carb uh, i recommend start what makes sense for you if you know that you don't want to limit your carbs very low then then go low carb uh, enjoy it have fun with it you'll do you'll have lots of success if you have not gone low carb before but anyway if you have any questions about that y'all let me know i'm just rambling at this point <laughs> uh polly is having air fried chicken and broccoli hello curtis so if you guys didn't just see, I added a little bit of avocado oil to my pork chops. 
and I'm just flipping them over and stirring up this olive oil on my pork chops. You don't have to put anything on your pork chops for your crust to stick, but I mean, this olive oil tastes so good. I added salt and pepper, some olive oil, and I am fixing to dump this into our seasoning crust. So what I did tonight, I just wanna go ahead and start this real quick so I can uh, get in the air fryer and then I'll talk to you some more. I'm gonna show you how pretty these are. You'll just take this pork chop, dip it into your crust that you're making and stick it in your air fryer. I've got my air fryer on 375 and I'll probably cook these for a good 20 minutes because they're kind of thick. These are, these are pretty thick. So what I did tonight is I took my um, crushed Parmesan and I seasoned my Parmesan cheese with some Flavor Guides Everything seasoning and a little bit of salt and pepper. So you don't have to use Flavor Guides, please guys, just because I have some doesn't mean you have to buy any. I really enjoy the ones I have. You can use any kind of seasoning. You can use garlic powder. You can use Italian seasoning. You can use seasoning salt. Any kind of seasoning you have that you enjoy on your keto journey, use it and make your crust. So I'm just gonna show you my third one. It's crust up really good. It makes a really good pork chop in the air fryer, chicken, pretty much anything. So you'll see, it's just a very thin layer of my crust. And I'm gonna cook these for a good 20 minutes because they're pretty darn thick. I should have actually took my hammer and uh, flattened them out a little bit. <laughs> now I got a voicemail from that number, so they must need me. I'm gonna dip this last one, see if you guys have any questions, and then I've got to get off and see who's calling me. It's gotta be a customer. Crystal says, how many carbs should you start with? So Crystal, for me, and my personality, I'm like 180% everything I do. So I went 100% ketosis. In one day i was like I, today's the day i'm starting it done <laughs> i have other friends who are like you know what i'm not gonna throw out everything in my house i don't want to um uh, feel like i'm limiting myself too strongly so they'll start with uh, low carb and my recommendations are if you don't want to start immediately with keto go ahead and start limiting your carb counts to about 75. if you can uh, look at your carb counts and make sure that you're having 75 or less carbs a day. You're doing fantastic. And then each day or every couple of days, lower it more to where you can get to that point of 25 net carbs or less. Then your body will create ketones as long as you stay consistent in that. Let me wash my hands. I'll be right back. <laughs> Question. Um, i trying to remember who asked me. Crystal, that was a really good question. So if anybody has any other questions, let me know. If you would like information on getting started, in the comments, just put getting started and I will send you some really simple information for you to start your own journey, whether it be low carb or keto. Look how pretty these are. So we're fixing to put these right into my air fryer, which is filthy. And I've got it on 375. I'm gonna start it for 10 minutes first and then we will, um, Wow, that was on bake and then we will uh see if i need to cook them much longer i'm sure i'll cook them for a good 20 minutes because they're so thick let's look at these brussels sprouts guys they look delicious so far yum <laughs> so excited about this meal i did not time these let me go ahead and set my timer for 15 minutes and i'll stir them around a little bit you do want to check on those brussels sprouts just to make sure they're not sticking so either slide your pan and make them scoot around or get you a little spatula or something just to move them around to make sure they're not sticking anywhere anyway if you want information on how to get started just put info uh, or getting started i'm sorry put getting started in the comments and i will send you information on how to get started i see that crystal and i will definitely help you lose 10 pounds 100 <laughs> percent. that is totally doable so we will get that done together all right, guys, if I don't see any questions coming through, I'm going to get off here so I can start cleaning up and call whoever this client is back. I know they need me for something or they would not have called twice and left me a voicemail. So <laughs> when I talk about my clients, I'm not talking about people who buy ketones. I'm talking about my business. Uh, we run an occupational health clinic, so I have over 200 customers that, you know, if they need me, they call me. They have my cell phone because I love helping people. So yes, I may give you my cell phone to help you with keto dieting, but I, my customers have me. And if they need me, they call me. So they gum. I don't know what in the world. Y'all see all the smoke? I thought I'd clean this thing. I must have some grease down the bottom of it. I'm gonna have to turn my, um, <laughs> my smoke alarm off real fast. 
All right, guys, I'm rambling. I love you. I'll talk to you later. Bye.